Hey guys, it's Roof. Welcome back to our podcast. Um, if you're new here, <laughs> go right ahead and subscribe, you know, get to know us, get to know our channel, our podcast that the Lord has allowed us to start last month. And we have been growing and have been standing firm in this podcast and many people have been watching this podcast due to the fact that it's helping them spiritually and i'm glad that this podcast is helping you to see the changes and the glory of god in your life manifest um so i'm really truly excited for episode five episode five i'm really excited i'm gonna be posting it this friday at 12 a.m and I know a lot of you guys have been asking me about episode 5. So episode 5 will be uploaded this week. Um, today, today, today. The topic is called. Removing leads to promotion. Okay. Removing leads to promotion. Let me tell you something, guys. Like, I could. I can relate to this. Every single time when I start a poc- my, like the podcast. I always say I can relate. Because in my life, I have testified many things that many people don't know and many people do know but since you are new or since you are you know a part of our family um i want you to know the things that god has done in my life god has done so many things in my life and i feel like people still need to hear it out there he saved me from suicidal thoughts he saved me from depression he saved me from loneliness he saved me from so many desires and addictions that were not honoring God he saved me from a lot of occasions in my life where I was almost about to die but this is how you know that God is real when I'm still here if I'm still breathing if you still see Ruthie right now it's because God is real and and I say that because whatever breathes (laughs) whatever has still breath in their lungs that means that you still have a purpose on this earth and a fulfillment to complete and i don't know what you're going through but before we get into this i want you to know that ending things in your life that's not the answer all the time shutting down sometimes is not always the answer being rude to people not always the answer sometimes you just gotta go to god and depend on him more instead of whoever that's in front whoever that's surrounded you whatever that's in your life that you depend on more than god sometimes you just gotta let go of that for god to be glorified in your life in your story to know that god is there for you because if you are not there for god how god can be there for you and that's if you have a relationship with the lord so i pray that the word that's going to be presented today will impact you i'm also kind of sick so i'm gonna try my best to give out the word um as best as i can (laughs) um but i'm excited and if you hear my nose like my stuffy nose i'm so sorry like i legit have toilet paper here because i don't have any kleenex but it's fine okay we're we're raw we're transparent here (laughs) but either way before we continue let's go right ahead and pray and then from there we will go ahead and read the word um the word of god okay Heavenly Father, God, we come before your throne and we thank you, Jesus, for this day, Lord. Father, God, that you allowed us to have, Lord. I pray that, God, that you speak to every individual that's watching this video, Lord, Father, God. That, God, that whatever they're going through, Jesus, that this video that's going to be sharing your word, Lord, Father, God, would help them and guide them, Lord, Father, God, from whatever season that they're in, whatever stronghold that they're dealing with, Lord, Father, God. I pray that you let yourself be glorified, Lord, Father, God, through this video. That, God, that people will seek you more after this video. And I pray that God to depend on you and not me. Father, receive glory and honor for what you do. Because without you, God, we wouldn't be here. Without you, God, without your wisdom, we wouldn't be able to give out your word. So I pray that you use me as a vessel. That you prophesy, that you minister to whoever needs to hear this word. Whoever you want me to minister. Pray that you let your will be done in this video. Receive glory and honor for what you do. Amen. Amen. Jesus. All right. The word is called removing leads to promotion we're going to be looking for john chapter um john chapter 18 verse 10 actually verse 11 we're going to read verse 11 so it can be easier for us and 
it can be a little bit more straightforward okay and the word of God it says in John chapter 18 verse 11 I'm gonna be reading um, the message version and it says in the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit amen Jesus answered Peter put back your sword do you think for a minute I'm not going to drink this cup the Father gave me that's a short <laughs> verse but I promise you you guys will understand at the end of this podcast <laughs> all right um the topic is called removing leads to promotion <clears throat> man guys this i'm just gonna be honest with you the lord was ministering to me strongly with this because i was able to see why god removes and why god adds and a lot of us we have asked asked god so many things in a secret and we have told God, God, I want this. I want I want a relationship. I want um, friends. I want a good job. I want a lot of things. <clears throat> we ask God for so many things in our lives and that we want. But the thing is that when we ask for it, we expect to receive it in the moment. And God does not give out things that we don't need yet. He gives out things that are necessary for you. The Lord was ministering to me when it came to this um, word because sometimes we do question the Lord, why he removes, why do you took this friendship away from me, why do you took my family away, whatever it is in our lives that we had that we valued so much the most, God removes it out of nowhere and we don't expect it. But I was searching up and, and you know the game chess really impacted me and is not about losing less. It's about, wow. <laughs> it's not about losing less. You see, people think that playing chess is, is about saving your pieces. Sometimes, you're not going to be able to save the pieces that you have. Because there's this thing that's called pawn promotion. Pawn promotion means, basically, your opponent is going to, trade you in with a new piece and take away the piece that you have they might take away the piece that you have but you got to understand that the opponent is going to give you a newer piece the opponent does not know the plan that you have or does not know what strategy you are using so whatever piece that they might give you can actually allow you to get ahead of the game what I'm trying to tell you guys today is that just because things have been removed, it does not technically mean that God is going to leave us empty handed. It means that God is reserving us for something that's better. So when you remove, you gain something better. And I was connecting myself with this because it showed me how and why God removes in our lives. And there was a point where Jesus, when he was about to go um, to, you know, um, complete the sacrifice, you know, Judas betrayed him, right? Something that really kind of got me like so spiritually and deep profound is that how Jesus kept going. Even if Judas betrayed him, you know, Judas betrayed the son of God. And you don't think that didn't hurt? And me, I'm like, dang, I wish I had the mentality of Jesus and be like, oh, so be it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue on. You know, it's crazy how what Judas did, Judas thought that Jesus getting arrested was going to stop Jesus from fulfilling the assignment. In reality, what Judas did was to help Jesus get closer to the glory that God had reserved for his son. I'm trying to tell you is that whatever has been removed is not only meant to give you a opportunity or promotion, 
but it allows you to get closer to the promise. You know, a lot of us, we are going through a lot of pain. Let's be honest. Let's be real. All of us, we are going through a lot of pain. We're going through our seasons. And sometimes in these seasons, the only thing that we start doing is complaining and going to God and saying, God, pero why? God, why are you allow this? And you know what? It's time for us to change our prayer and change our question to God and start asking God, God, what are you trying to show me? What are you trying to teach me? And actually, my mother, a woman of God, has taught me that. She told me, Ruth, without you, you know, instead of you going to God and telling God, oh, I don't understand. Why you don't ask God, God, what are you trying to show me? What are you trying to liberate me from? Because you know what? God doesn't only remove for you to gain something better. God is removing because he's protecting you. Because what you carry, not many people are supposed to be around it. The gift that God has placed in you is not meant to be around with a lot of people. There are going to be minimum people in your circle. And God is going to place people that understand the vision and the calling that God has in store for you. God is going to add people that are going to get you closer to the promise. People that are going to support you. People that are willing to help you to get closer to your miracle. It's like the man that was paralyzed. And this man, man, he was trying to get his miracle. And it really impacted me. And actually, I'm going to look for it for you guys. Word of God, it says in Mark chapter 2, verse 3 through 11. It says, in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, amen. Four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. Woo! So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, What is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately that they were thinking. So he asked them, Why do you question this in your heart? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven? Or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. I want to tell you that not only God removes but God is going to add people that are going to allow you to get closer to the promise and the miracle that he has for you. Your community, what surrounded you, can affect you. People might say, Ruth, what do you mean? If you have people that don't look for the vision of God, that don't seek God, I don't know nothing about God. How can you expect them to help you? To overcome your temptations if they don't know nothing about him. What I'm trying to tell you is that if you don't have a good community that's willing to lift you up. Just like how those four men lift up that paralyzed man to the roof because they couldn't get near Jesus because there was a whole crowd. If you have people that are willing <laughs> to do that for you, to get closer to the healing that God wants to give you and allow you to have today and tonight, whatever day. You're going to see God's hand move in your favor. You see, I was talking to one of my friends and I told her, Hey, um, it's crazy how people think that arising is only by seeking God and that's it. And she told me, yeah, that is true. But what do you mean? Tell her, in order for you to arise, 
is not only for you to seek God, but also to also to examine what you have surrounded you. <laughs> That's where the serpent comes in. I don't want to only talk about removing. I also want to talk about you having the serpent and using this correctly. Because sometimes in this walk, that whatever we see that's toxic, we go for it. <laughs> that's our human nature. That's our hum human nature. We go for things that are toxic, unfortunately, because we're humans. Because it can satisfy us in the moment, but it causes a lot of damage. My question for you today is, do you prefer something to satisfy you instead of to edify you? Because satisfaction does not last. But edifying leads you to a change. To a change. To a better result. It takes, you know, the Lord was ministered to me for the past few days based on, on friendships and community. And I'm excited because on August, one of my friends that I love and adore are going to be a part of our podcast and we're going to be talking about friendships. But God was teaching me about circles a lot of us, we have our own group, our own circle. And there are groups that can contaminate you spiritually and that could help you spiritually. Like I said, God is not going to add something that's going to contaminate you, but to help you. Okay. Now, I remember I told God and I, and I wrote it in my, in my journal. And I said, God, clean out my circle. Because I don't want anything to contaminate what you have given to me. After that week, I started losing people that was along the side with me. Because God showed me that they were not going to help me. And that they were not going to get me further to where God wanted me to get to. You know, there's people that, that keeps you away from God. And sometimes we don't want to own up to that because we don't want to be alone. Let's be honest. Loneliness is something that the human does not like. And the word of God, it says, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, it says in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. But Jesus told him, told him no, script, the scripture says, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. You can't walk in this path without the word of God in you. You got to walk with the word of God. You have to be a part of that relationship, of that man. You have to be a part of his presence. You have to be living within the salvation correctly but i said but Ruth, what does this have to do with removing and leading us to promotion because in order for you to get closer to the promise you can't walk alone without the bread of life the bread of life represents the word of god because in the word of god it talks about with elijah when he went to God, and he said, God, I'm no better than my ancestors. An angel came in and said, get up and eat and drink. And there's a lot of people that have been asking God, God, I need you to answer. And the only thing that God has been telling them, get up and eat and drink my word. Seek me. Come to me. Surrender everything that you are feeling. Because I understand you are human. You don't know how to control your feelings. You don't know how to, you don't know how to control your emotions. But one thing I'm going to tell you. Is that if you live by the bread of life, if you live by what God tells you, by what God confirmed you, 
everything that you will see will unravel in your favor. And that's if you remain your sight on God. Because a lot of us, we are walking by sight, but not by faith. It's like when you are driving. <laughs> of course, you got to have your sight on the road. You got you to gotta have your focus on the road. Oh, it's crazy how it's so easy for us, us passengers, to knock out and go to sleep and let the driver drive. Why is it so easy for us to go to sleep <laughs> in, the pas- on, in the passenger seat? Why, why is it so easy for us? Oh, because we know someone is taking control of the wheel. And I, and I like to represent this as saying, God is driving. But you decide to keep your eyes open or closed because you are trusting in the one that's driving the car. It's time for us to walk by faith and not by sight. Because when you walk by faith, you will be able to see God manifest in your favor. Everything that you went through in 2024, or we're almost about to finish the year, but I'm here to prophesy over your life and tell you that everything that you have went through, people will see the victory and the glory of God over your life. The people that have wished death upon you, they will see you get out of the tomb that you were in just like Lazarus. Like Martha was crying because she thought that she lost her brother. But at that moment, her just trusting and she said, Jesus, do something. He, You're going to wait until he's fully dead? Ain't you the son of God? And he said, you're not believing in me. The moment when Jesus did what he did, he told Lazarus on the, first, on the fourth day, He had a strong odor. He was dead. And Jesus said from outside of the tomb, Lazarus, come out. Many people will see the final product. That final product is you. The people that said that you were dying, the people that said that you were not going to get nowhere, that you were not going to exceed, they will see you get out of your own tomb today and tomorrow, this year. And we know what made it powerful is that Jesus told the people that didn't believe that Lazarus was going to get out of the tomb. He told them, remove the grave clothing off of him. The people that wish you dead and that didn't believe in the ministry, that didn't believe in anything that you had with the Lord, will be the same ones to remove the grave clothing off of you. And they will see the final product. When God removes... (laughs) It's not for you to feel alone, but for you to get closer and gain something back. Because they took something away from you. But guess what? They allowed you to gain something better than what you had in the beginning. Guys, keep your head up. Don't look back, for there's so many things that God has in store. Many people may not believe in what God has for you. But if you just keep your eyes on him. If you keep your eyes on him. You won't have to worry. You won't have to worry about what people think of you. But just think about what God thinks of you. Alright. God bless everyone. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. It was not too long. Because your girl's not feeling well. But I pray that this word impacts you. And I hope that you will be. you are able to recognize that. Just like how Jesus had to remind Peter that he has to drink the cup that his father has given him. You shall do the same thing. Drink the cup that God has placed in your hands. And you will see the glory that God will unleash if you just keep your eyes and your focus on him. I love you guys. Take care. God bless. Subscribe. All our social medias in the description box. And I will see you guys next time.